social dynamic change, I would say probably around the 80 where most of the units had become female-headed households. And you had a lot of people, uh, most in those cases, those were situations where, of course, there was no male in the household. And uh, a lot of the females were on, uh, uh, they were getting assistance. My friends didn't have it as good as I had it. I had my mom and my dad. My mom and my, well, my mom, she was a homebody. She wasn't out in the street. She wasn't doing drugs. My, my friends, their, their mom was addicted to smoking, marijuana, addicted to pills. My mom, she stayed at home. She wasn't, she didn't do none of that, so. And I had my dad at home, so my mom, my parent, my best friends, they didn't have their father at home with them. So I had my mom and my dad, and I, my mom and my dad stayed on me at school. Well, for me, uh, coming from the West End, it was kind of scary the thought of Shepherd Square because people always used to tell me that when uh, you're not from Shepherd Square, you're not allowed to come up there. We we all went to Atherton High School, oh, okay. which was which is in the Highlands, and it was an eye-opening experience for me because. I didn't realize that I was, you know, really that poor, you know, uh, until you saw how other people really were living. I mean, you had a sense of it, but um, when you're in class, you know, you go on, you're actually sitting in class with people, you, you notice the cultural and the uh, education impact on, on, on being poor. You're not, you, you're, not as, you're not as in tune as to what are, um, what, what are the principles of, of everyday life in the bigger world in the scheme of things. In the beginning, um, people stayed, uh, but as we got older, um, and maybe that's when I started to be conscious, you know, of, of new people coming in, um, you know, in my late teens, 18, 19, started to notice, especially when I would, uh, you know, come back from college, um, after staying on campus and, you know, during the summer months, come back home here to Shepherd Square. Uh, we we'll just kind of notice uh, that there's a difference, you know, there's different um, new faces, people that I didn't know. So it was at that time that I started to notice, uh, you know, the community was changing a little bit. I was unaware at the time, too, that things are self-responsibility. I don't know, a lot of people wasn't being responsible living in environments like this. Maybe things were happening differently. Um, when I was a child, um, it wasn't that we never had a shooting in the neighborhood, but it, it was rare. Uh, and normally it was uh, the kind of thing where the whole community came out to find out what, what happened. I didn't want my kids to keep on seeing violence, people getting shot, dying in front of them and stuff. None of my friends wanted to come over my house. They said, no, Shepherd Square is bad. We heard that y'all stay on the news. No, I would never come to Shepherd Square. Some of my friends, they wouldn't even come to my son's birthday party. People just had changed. I lived on the porch with this younger girl that was moving in, and she did not have any pride in taking care of the porch and our surroundings where we live. Living in a housing project, there wasn't a stigma. It seemed like it was around the 70s when I first heard the stigma, the stigma being, oh, you live in the bricks. When I was growing up, Shepherd Square was just like apartments. This is just where somebody lived. They were like apartments. That stigma, and I want to point, I want to be clear on that, is that when I was growing up, there was no stigma. You lived in Shepherd Square. It was just a place where people lived. They always come with a, a disadvantage because they've been in a place that, uh, more or less, they've created as their home for generations. But at the same time, uh, the income level has not been that great over the years, so they're already kind of under an eight ball, if you will. And they're challenged with the conditions, the negativity sometimes. But there's a lot of positive stories that come out of situations like this. There was a uh, negative perception uh, in regards to Shepherd Square. And I think a lot of it was because, you know, of some of the crime, of some of the, even some of the rumors, you know, because a lot of stuff wasn't true. You know, you would hear different things that would have happened. And it just, it became uh, almost like an aroma 
that almost plagued the neighborhood. And it always was not necessarily true. I know there was an article that got put out um, several years ago that we were the 13th or maybe 14th worst neighborhood to live in in, in, this, in the country. Now, for a person who has worked here for a number of years, I never felt that place. I've never felt in that place that we were the the worst, one of the worst unsafest neighborhoods to live in. Um, but I do know that there were some negative negative behaviors in this community, and you know, and a lot of it was around uh, around drug trafficking, some gang involvement, and then, like I mentioned, um, you know, in prior conversations, you know, having outsiders come in and bring down the quality of the neighborhood. Quarks that projects that was my whole family. Her is just my family and some folks we don't even know. If you see how it is now, they not gonna want people like us back up here because they're going to just how they have Liberty Green where it's quiet and you don't see too many folks outside. People don't want to come around here. Ain't nothing around here. You can't go Walgreens. Well, you get some Walgreens now. First, you couldn't go Walgreens. No Walmarts and no malls or none of that. You know, no, no coffee shops or none of that around this area. So uh, I would say, you know, I would say, like people that have like little money, they wouldn't come right here because they ain't got nowhere to spend their money. As years went on, things began to accumulate, which began to change. Uh, 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 it's just because that people didn't have nothing to go on, you know, because people that had felonies was getting pushed out the door and started getting pushed in the door. You know, we was getting turned away. So you got to understand growing up in the projects, was a way of living for us, you know what I'm saying? A survival skill. It ain't that a person want to sell drugs, but the outcome is that they ain't got no choice because what do we do from this point on? We, we can't get jobs, we can't get apartments, they won't let us get established, so ain't nothing else to do. Some people, they just want, just want opportunity. In a lot of cases, if we, if we have opportunity, we wouldn't need a handout. You have uh, people, um, who, who need it. You, you have people who uh, come from uh, disadvantaged backgrounds and if it wasn't for uh, public housing and uh, fair housing that uh, uh, promises those people uh, who live in it uh, that they'll get a, you know, a fair shot, man, and be treated fairly, uh, uh, that, that's needed, man, that's important. If you don't have a spirit that can deal with these conditions, you'll succumb to the forces and you'll just collapse and die, man. You gotta have a built-in spirit to deal with these conditions. That is an uplifting spirit. I've been here all my life. I haven't been anywhere but here. This is this is where I grew up, this is where I raised my kids, this is where my mama raised, this this is where I, this is where I wanna be. But then all of a sudden you tell me I got to move to a neighborhood I don't know, to be around some people I had never been around, be in a, a community that I never been a part of, and you just gonna snatch me and pluck me out of my community and put me over here and tell me do good. I felt good having like a community rather than just an individual home. You know, I just felt like if my mom wasn't there, I can go over to my friend's house and I'll be okay. Or, you know, um, to the community center. And I just feel like now, like in the West End, there's really no community centers there. There's really nothing for the kids to do. So they're just kind of like hanging outside in the front of their house, dribbling a ball, playing four square. You know, rather than in Shepherd Square, those kids could have went to the center, they could have had a ball, they could have had met a lot of other people, parents would have came in, the parents would have met their friends. It was just kind of like we were all coming together in a sense. Some of the positives are that it would change this area. Um, I, um, I guess this is considered, well, this is a poor area. And if, you know, myself or some other people that I may know associate with, if we came to the homes, we would say, oh, you know, we would have pity on some some of the families here, but they don't see it that way. It kind of hurts a little bit to see something you've been around your whole life just be erased like that. I mean, <clears throat> after this, then what?
There's too many memories around here. There's a couple of people, you know what I'm saying, I know that that's just like, they glad that it's gone, you know what I'm saying, because they got better homes and they got some, you know what I'm saying, room and better. But to me, it's, I, it's just, you know, it's something sentimental to me. I was kind of skeptical about the Hope Six thing because, you know, they're turning down all of, um, all of the projects, you know, that's their goal, to get all of the projects t tore down. But they're not thinking about the, this is where, these is actual people's homes, you know. Some people have not been as not as driven as others. Any kind of change affects all kind of people. Even, even turn this down, it's going to affect people that's out, farther out, you know, because now they're going to have people like us going out that way. So it's going to be like conflict and all of that. It's going to be because different people deal, live different ways. And, you know, it's hard to tell a stubborn old dog and show him a new trick. If you want to improve a community, but you love its richness, why not repair it, then tear it down? Uh, I just felt like they could have just took that money and just repaired and made it look good with those bricks. Those bricks is actually pretty decent for our people that maybe are struggling or going through things. It's, it's sustainable. I mean, the only thing it needs is some better cabinets, better shower, some better fencing, some better plantation, some grass. Bam, you got a community. I don't think you turn it down and have to rebuild it back up.